Well, you're listening to CKUA Radio. My name is Grant Stobel, and next up, I'm really thrilled to say a conversation about a new book, The Rainbow, The Midwife, and The Birds. Raymond Yakalaya is a much-acclaimed Dene author and filmmaker who's originally from Tulita in Northwest Territories, based in Edmonton, and I am absolutely a thrill beyond measure to say that he joins us right now on CKUA to talk about his brand new book, which is just out via Alberta's own Dervile and Uproot books. Raymond Yakalaya, it is such a thrill to get a chance to welcome you here. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Grant. It's nice to be here also. I don't know how you do all this. You've been a acclaimed artist in the filmmaking arts for decades. I've heard you say that you little suspected that you would ever become an author. What was it that moved you to start taking to the printed page and, and creating art that way? Uh, I remember one day I was at my computer working and I was thinking about my grandmother. I had two grandmothers. I had actually three grandmothers, but two that I knew really well. One, the third one, was my mom's real mom. And I never got to uh, meet her. And my, she died a day after delivering uh, my mother. And uh, but her and my uh, my grandmother Harriet, uh, who adopted my mom, um, my gr- my real granny knew she was dying, and asked uh, Harriet, uh, my granny, if she would raise my mom. And uh, this was quite special for my granny, uh, my grandmother Harriet, because Granny Harriet was a midwife for all of our people in uh, in the Northwest Territories from our little town. They say that she delivered over 400 uh, babies and never lost one, but she she could never have children of her own. So all of a sudden, to have a child, uh, and so her and uh, Grandpa Noel raised my mother. So that was really uh, quite something. And I was thinking about grand, my, my grandmother, Harriet, and uh, she was a deeply, I would say, religious, but also a very spiritual woman. And I started thinking about her. And on my computer, I started just typing about her, my thoughts on her. And, and just like osmosis, a story came out about my grandmother, Harriet, and I was looking at it, and I said, holy smokes. I read it, and I said, you know me, I'm not, I'm not much of a critic. And I read it, and I said, is this ever good? <laughs> yeah. I, of course, I'm not shy about, uh, about blowing my own horn, but it really was good. And uh, so I, <clears throat> I was quite amazed by that because I like the idea of writing, and I, I really like writers, and I, I love hmm. storytellers. And in many, many ways, uh, filmmakers are storytellers, and we do it in the visual. We do it in the more, we do it in the more powerful way of audiovisual. I always say, filmmaking for me is like painting with magic. Wow! And that's how I would describe filmmaking. And you can see because we work with all of the arts, the visual, the uh, special effects, music. We work with everything. So it's the most powerful language that I know of to, uh, to get a message across. But when I started writing that, uh, I started writing about my grandmother, my grandmother Harriet, and then I wrote another story about my grandmother Elizabeth, my dad's mom. It kind of opened that door for me that I went through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really surprised myself, uh, Grant. I, I didn't expect that. And then I realized how much I love doing it, you know, love telling their, their stories because uh, I, I, I knew how important they were. And their stories always made sense. Their, their observations, their humor, their sadness, you know, things like that that were very moving to me. And I really enjoyed that. And I thought, you know, what the old Dena people knew a long time ago about surviving were still good today, and they will still be good a thousand years from now. And maybe Dena kids should read that, but not only that, but all kids of the world should read these things to learn, you know, being honest, being truthful, being compassionate, being kind to animals, being kind to each other, you know, things like that. I think really important things. So uh, 
I, I, I thought in my writing, this is what I will, I will reflect what my, my, my grandparents, my grandmothers uh, learned, learned and taught me. And so I, that's how I, I started. But I did not, I never did plan on it. It was just something that kind of came out of me, I would say, naturally. And the stories came. So that was a very inconspicuous way to, to become a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what a writer and what a collection of stories this is. Very diverse. I mean, as the title would suggest, you know, there's a number of different really striking elements that you approach in these four stories, some of which are tales of your own lived experience and some of which are handed down as cultural stories through the family. Uh, what is the thread that brings these four stories together in this new collection, would you say, Raymond? Well, I, the one that, that I think about right now as you talk about that is I think of the... Uh, the rainbow story, which is quite quite special story, where we we came through a big uh, big thunderstorm, black clouds, angry clouds, angry lightning, angry rain, and we flew out and we flew into a uh, blue sky with uh, with a rainbow in front of us, and. Uh, the woman pilot that was there, we were in a small little airplane, and we looked at it. It was gorgeous. You know, it was like a living thing. It was like uh, glowing in the sky. And I said to her, let's fly through it. Oh, it was something I can't even describe it. I don't think I, I do justice to it. The feeling that I went through, it was like flying through the sacred or through the divine. It uh, kind of just took your... Well, I don't even have enough good words to describe it. But I always felt like I was flying, you know, uh, as, well as close to the Creator as I could get. And when we flew through it and we looked at each other, the pilot and I, we were, our face was covered the colors of the rainbow, and we went through it. It was like a very holy moment, I guess, sacred moment. And we went through it, and she says, what do you think? And I said, let's turn around and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so through that, you know, in my own experience, I always tell people if you're in a small little airplane, do it. Do something like that, you know. You'll really appreciate that. Your your soul will really appreciate that. Well, it's so generous of you to have shared this with us because I feel like in some small way we do experience a glimmer of that. And, and that story is also brought to life by this arresting short film also, which has been created by Rich Teru out of Calgary. And there's a video game to go along with it. There's, there's so much that enriches this whole experience. Yeah, well, the, the Rich did a really good job, I have to say. Congratulations to that uh, production crew. But I had nothing to do with the, the video game. I just wrote the story. <laughs> right. And then the, the next thing, I get a call from uh, <laughs> the publisher, Lorraine Sheba, and she says, Raymond, we created a video game. And, and of course, I'm my, my head's not there, right? But, yeah. But then I looked at it. It was like, wow, is this ever good? You know, like a real imagination. So I was quite amazed. The other thing that I want to say, um, Grant, that's really important for me to say this, as a First Nations writer... And I would say this to First Nations, uh, other writers, and um, that we are losing everything in our country, especially amongst the our people, with the elders dying, all the old stories of creation, all of our old legends. That is really important that we not forget it and we put it down, because this is part of our cultural heritage and spiritual heritage, and we need to remember, and our kids need to know that. You know, when the white men came here, they, the missionaries were the worst. They started um, saying things from the native people. The First Nations were no good. Well, we know that's just a bunch of garbage. Mm. And uh, we have many, many good things. I mean, and those are important things to save. And so I would say to the writers, uh, if you're listening out there, write what you know, write about your people. We need records as we move forward into the future. Our country needs these records because it's us at the end of the day who discovered this continent. 
and we discovered, you know, the sacred places, the holy places, um, special, special places. And so I think it's really important that we we write this down and, and give our experiences in this regard. So I think it's really important in that way. So I want to say that, and I, I really, really love that um, some of my work now, especially in the writing s- style, is going into the education system. Mm-hmm. And uh, because uh, the education system needs to teach... Uh, what I've said about our legends of creation, all of our stories of how we survived, you know, the last ice age, how we came to this continent, uh, you know, things like that. That's really, really important. Uh, we didn't come across like the settlers did on a boat. We came, you know, we, we had to fight our way over here, mm-hmm. you know. We, our people were being used as food by the, the dire wolves and the saber two tigers and the lions that were here and the giant animals from years ago. And we still have memories of that. So it's important that we record those stories and that our people share them with, you know, the rest of the, the Canadian, or the, the world, I guess. The world, yeah. Yeah, because we have our own magic and we need to talk about that. So that's what I'm saying. I would encourage uh, writers, and uh, for especially amongst the First Nations, but I would also encourage writers from all people that want to write. I mean, it's really a fun process, and uh, I think you discover lots of things about yourself. And uh, so it's actually a very positive thing. It's probably one of the best things I've ever done. And I never expected that, you know, when I started writing about my grandmother. And uh, so it it really, uh, it really opened my eyes. And it kind of reminds me when I, was, when I was back in boarding school, I used to read, I used to love to read, and I, my, my two favorite heroes were Huckleberry Finn and Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> I was 10, 10 years old, right? And I loved, oh, and Dagwood, I loved Dagwood. Okay, sure, Blondie. Yeah, yeah Blondie, because <laughs> Herb and, and Dagwood used to make sandwiches. You know, we were growing up in Anuik in the boarding school. And those guys would make uh, all these midnight sandwiches. And, of course, we had no idea what was salami or pepperoni or anything like that, right? <laughs> Limburger cheese or anything like that. So we were wondering to ourselves, we're only like 10 years old. We're just kids, right? What the hell are those guys doing, you know? And they're creating all these beautiful sandwiches. And I said to myself, you know, when I get to be out of this place and I get to be, a, 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 you know, a man, I'm going <laughs> to... Go down and uh, and get all this food. I'm gonna make myself a big sandwich, I guess. And you know, I did. It was delicious. <laughs> so the things you can learn from Dennis the Menace and uh, and and Dagwood and uh, and I, and I especially loved uh, Huckleberry Finn because he was the guy that always stood up for righteousness, and he never backed down. Mm. And he saw something crooked, he wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't back away because he didn't want that. He wanted things to be straight. He wanted things to be good. And he hated uh, abuse and he hated, uh, you know, when things were were sideways and people were abusing other people like in the slave day in the mm-hmm. story, right? Yeah. His sense of righteousness, I think. So, I, you know, you kind of learn stuff from, from reading, right? So uh, those are the kind of... St- Things that I had learned when I was reading, and I didn't think about it till later. Like, wow, it, these kind of characters, which were fun in my life mm-hmm. in my early days, but they really pointed me in, in like in the right direction, in a good direction, I would say. So, uh, I would say the people encourage them to read and to write, and and who knows where you'll go. That's the only thing I want to do is encourage uh, writers and people to read their books, right? Absolutely. And I mean, you, you just said, I know that as a fan of, say, Huckleberry Finn and Dennis the Menace, you know, these these are stories that are ostensibly for young people. And, and your, your collection of stories is ostensibly aimed at young people as well. But they're stories for anyone or to feed your soul as a youngster and nurture that imagination and, and go on and live that dream when you come of age. I think so. I mean, there are other Things that I started writing now, uh, we the hostel that I was in in 
in Newbig was a place called Grolier Hall. That's probably got the the baddest name in the Northwest Territories for a residential. It wasn't a residential school. It was a residence where we yeah. stayed. Right. And we had uh, four convicted pedophiles that in in uh, junior boys and senior boys that uh, created all kinds of problems. And, and the Catholic Church never got rid of them. They, anyway, they through that, uh, the end result was more than 20 boys ended up committing suicide over their the abuses. And uh, one of my, my relatives is is writing a book on, on the abuses of uh, Grolier Hall. And I don't think he will finish it, but I have told him I will help him finish it. So I will start writing about that because I lost two, re- two really good friends and members of my family were affected by that. I think nine members, maybe more, were affected. So, you know, it brought me great sadness. We were all affected. And, uh, you know, it took us time to sort it out. We never got any help from the Catholic Church. We never got any help from the government of the Northwest Territories Department of Education who financed the whole thing. So we were kind of left at the mercy of, you know, uh, getting into drugs and getting into drinking. I myself uh, did that and... uh, but we didn't know how to do. Of course. We had nowhere to go, you know, nobody to to kind of say you guys are, you know, we were like children of trauma mm. that came out of there. So I, I have great uh, compassion for people on the streets when I see them here in Edmonton because I know what they went through. Yeah. And uh, it's really affected them in a kind of negative way. It affected me in a negative way. I had to go through it. And uh, it touched all of our families in the Northwest Territories. And we're still recovering from that. And uh, so, you know, I have nothing good to say about the Catholics uh, coming to the Northwest Territories. I always describe it as a, as a dark cloud descending on, on, on the Dena people and I would say the in, on the New Valley people. They started changing and, and telling us that we were no good, that our spirituality was no good. And, uh, you know, when you're 10 years old, you don't know what to believe. I can only believe what my grandmothers and my grandfathers had taught me, that there was only one God, and the, and that God was a, was a good and great God, creator. So, you know, it, it kind of made me, how I will say, search for the truth. Search mm-hmm. for the goodness. Mm-hmm. I needed to do that for myself. So I think it was really important as part of you know my healing, my uh, my searching for the truth. And so I think that that kind of helped me uh, to become a writer. And I, I I hope it hope I hope it helped me become a better person. Is what I try I'm trying to say. And uh, and certainly. Uh, I know that I, I, I hate, like my mother always spoke out against injustice, and I hope it gave me more compassion for people that are struggling, especially on the streets, you know, our people. Hmm. So, Raymond, very briefly, I, I know that we're just talking about the brand new book, The Rainbow, The Midwife, and The Birds. However, you have at least a couple of other literary projects on the go right now as well. Can you give us just a little bit of a glimpse into what you're working on creating at the moment? What's next? One of the other books that I'm working on, uh, Grant, is about the prophets and uh, the shamans, I guess, medicine people. and famous Dena leaders that we had in, in our in our territory, people that had real magic, much like the uh, old age um, Bible prophets, mm-hmm. people that could see uh, the future, that could predict events, uh, people that could communicate with animals, that knew their language, people that uh, were special, like like the Bible prophets. Two of them was, uh, uh, one famous one was Ea from our region. And he predicted the uh, explosion of the atomic bombs. 
and uh, and uh, his uh, in World War II the atomic bombs uh, uranium came from Great Bear Lake from our region. Wow! I live about maybe hundred miles from it, and the Dene used to call them. They didn't know what was uranium in those days. They called it fire rocks. They had bad feelings about these rocks, and uh, and it, 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 and they were from from a certain place, and you weren't supposed to camp there. Wow! And uh, so, but of course, the people were hunting, and the fall time the story goes, and they camped there, and they had uh, they had the medicine man with them, and. Uh, while they were there in the, fall, in the fall, he started drumming in his sleep. And uh, so everybody got up, made a fire, and he was sleeping and he's drumming, singing. And uh, when he woke up, he said he had seen terrible things. And they asked him what he'd seen, and he said there will be these rocks that were sleeping on the fire rocks, he said. Uh, there will be a time when uh, there will be another people come with a giant bird and they will take these rocks and put it in a big log and the giant bird will pick up that log and will fly to the end of the earth and there they will find a people that look like us but it's not us We're talking about the Japanese and uh, as as it gets above them the giant bird will release the log and it will fall on the, the people. And as soon as it hit, hits the ground, he says, it will make a big fire, he says. Big, big fire, bright, bright. And he said he could hear them screaming and dying and burning. And that was the atomic bomb. And that's exactly what happened. That was the, the uranium that went into Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, but also the first bomb in uh, in New Mexico, Almogordo. And so, you know, that was one of his prophecies. The other one, my, my grandfather, uh, Saul, Chief Saul Blondin, had a prophecy similar to that. He couldn't speak English, but he could see into the future. And uh, at the beginning of the war, they asked him, how will the war end? And he replied back in the Dene language, he said, the war will end with a light brighter than the sun. Again, nuclear, nuclear bomb flash. So these were very, very special people that, uh, you know, we're starting to write about them. You know, they saw things. And... Uh, what I say is we cannot forget them. These are our people, our special people, and they're our relatives. So, uh, yeah, I just want to I'll share that with you. The way that you have elucidated those topics and as whether as a filmmaker, as a producer, as an as a author is amazing. It's not only a healing journey for yourself, but you know, you're helping so many others to understand and process and, and move forward as uh, individuals and as a society, hopefully a ho hopefully one day a healthy society as well. And um, I'd love to ask you, Raymond, so, I have so many questions. Just one, one last one, if I may. I, I know that your surname is a, has been long been a famed one in the North. Could you tell us a little bit about the story of, of your surname? I will do that. Um, my... Uh my great grandfather, and his name appears on Treaty Number Eleven. Uh, he only he only used his name Yakalaya. Um, so, in the Dene language, Yake is Y A K -E is pronounced Yake, and Yake, in translates to English, it means heaven. And uh, so, when the name translates. I heard it uh, translated five ways, so I'll give you the first three. It means one who's been to heaven, one who sings in heaven, and a gift from heaven. Now, the fourth one, the fourth one uh, Yakalaya, is uh, from Koval Lake area uh, dialect. Mm -hmm. 
they call themselves the the end of the world people. It's in our region in the Satu. And uh, the former premier, uh, Steve Kakwe, called me when he was down here. He said, Raymond, I asked the elders um, of uh, Kova Lake, what is the translation of your name? Now, Kova Lake, they speak like an like an old ancient Dena dialect. So it would be like comparing uh, our English, how we're talking now, to Shakespearean <laughs> English. Oh like my. that, okay. like that. They speak yeah. that kind of a Shakespearean uh, Dena dialect, old one. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, Steve, uh, Steve had asked the elders, can you give us a translation of Yakalaya? So they said, yeah, we can do that. So they came back and they said, we, we can tell you. So they had, because that's from the area that the name comes from. So uh, they, so he, he said, uh, "One who sings love songs in heaven." Steve said, "I don't even know what to say," and I said, "I don't even know what to say myself." But he says that's a translation. So when I was just up in, so there were four translations. The fifth one I was just up in Fort Simpson a couple of weeks ago, and the the Decho people, which is south of. My region is the Satu, and they said um, the Grand Chief, uh, Herbie Norwegian, he was breaking down the name Yakalaya, and he says, one who wanders in heaven. So I'm giving you the the five uh, translations of my name, so there you go. And you're one who has wandered in heaven through a rainbow twice. So there you yes. have it. Yeah, I, I would say this, Grant. I would definitely tell anybody, if you're flying in a little airplane, you get to do something, you have to do it. You will always thank yourself. And I think your soul and your heart will uh, will uh, will be happy about that. Well, I thank you so much, Raymond, for being here. This has been such an amazing conversation. Uh, it was fun, Grant. Nice to meet you also. That is Raymond Yakalaya, the acclaimed filmmaker and author. His new book is The Rainbow, The Midwife, and the Birds, just out via Dervile and Uproot Books, based right here in Alberta. The great Raymond Yakalaya. Check it out. It's amazing. Thank you, Grant.